Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Nativity. Good to see you all here this morning. If you are a visitor, if you'd please take a moment to fill out a visitor card, we would certainly appreciate that. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the youth for a fantastic pancake supper. I mean, it was just a really good night, and also the Super Bowl of caring. Uh, thank you all for your generosity for that. Even though neither one of those teams is within 500 miles of us, uh, we managed to collect $487 and 207 pounds of food for our partners at Calvary Food Pantry. So that was fantastic. We do have an annual meeting next Sunday between the worship services. It starts at 920. So if you want a short worship service, come to the 845 next week. We're going to be flying to get that deadline. Uh, but we'll update you all on what's happened in the last year. Uh, Dennis Teal has a trialogue coming up. I'd like to invite him up to talk about that. Good morning. Uh, trialogue is like three sides of a triangle, three different uh, religions, people from each uh, three religions coming together to learn more about each other, uh, to grow in faith, and to grow in community. We all worship the same God. Uh, it's in the details that we learn more about that God, whether it's somebody from our own religion or one of the others. The first meeting is next Tuesday, the 27th at 6 o'clock at the Barnes and Noble up in Asheville Mall. Most of our Jewish and Muslim counterparts live in Asheville, so it's gonna be a, a bit north of us most of the time. If you'd like to sign up uh, to come as little or as much as possible, I'll have a sign-up sheet uh, in the back after uh, worship. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, we do have our, at, or our Lent midweek services. Uh, we have soup supper at 5.30, worship at 6.30. I invite you to participate in the prayer loom, which is out in the narthex. There's a description in your bulletin of how to do that. I'd also like to invite David Ness to come up. Our midweek offerings this year are being directed to, towards the Habitat Build, and he can share more about that. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, the last few months, uh, several of us in Nativity have started volunteering with Habitat for Humanity. If you don't know Habitat, they're an international nonprofit organization. They're dedicated to building affordable housing in local communities besides a lot of other good stuff. Uh, right now, they're building a, uh, a neighborhood of affordable housing here in South Asheville, uh, over in Arden, as well as a second neighborhood in the north of Buncombe County up by Mars Hill. Uh, Nativity as a church has a long uh, history and relationship with Habitat, but we've been kind of inactive for a number of years. But I'm happy to say uh, our church council recently voted to make Habitat one of our uh, official partnerships as a, as a church. What that means is we're going to be supporting Habitat a little bit more formally over the long term, which is a good thing. Uh, there's a number of ways you and we can support Habitat. Firstly, you can uh, volunteer to help build these houses. So you can go spend a day swinging a hammer or using a paintbrush to help build this house, these houses. Um, no experience is needed. They're very uh, capable of, of using everybody's skills to uh, make a difference. You'd be surprised how much you can get accomplished in a day. Uh, if that's not your cup of tea, you can also uh, volunteer to bring lunches or snacks for the workers at these build days. They, they love that kind of support. Uh, another way you can volunteer with Habitat is to work in their uh, offices during the week to help with administrative work. Or you could uh, volunteer to work in their restore uh, store downtown where they sell used furniture and stuff to raise money. So there's a lot of ways to uh, volunteer to help. Lastly, uh, we can all help Habitat financially. You can give, uh, donate money to them in, in person, or now you can do it through um, Nativity. If you ever want to donate money to Habitat uh, as an offering, you can just simply write Habitat on your offering, and, and uh, Nativity will make sure it gets to the right people at the right time. But as, chat, as Pastor said, uh, the, the Lenten offerings and the midweek services this um, uh, season will uh, be uh, donated entirely to uh, Habitats, and some folks in our community have agreed to match any donations made during those midweek services to kind of jumpstart this partnership that we're going to 
uh, build here with nativity. Just want to wrap up by saying uh, I, I personally really find it rewarding working this way, you know, using my hands to, to create something that's going to be lasting and, and that matters in my local community, uh, working alongside other people in our community. So I find it rewarding and I encourage everybody here to think about how you can support Habitat as well. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, just two more uh, announcements. One is our last question as we work on strategic planning together. This may be the most powerful of the questions, and it is, is there a ministry uh, that we can stop doing? Difficult question to answer, but uh, that will really help us in that process as well. And I ask for your continued prayers as we work on the strategic plan to navigate our next few years together. Finally, we are joined this morning by Pastor Beth Kearney. She is well, retired Pastor Beth Kearney. Uh, she was an assistant to the bishop for 25 years. She has also done an interim time here at Nativity, and she's also a faithful disciple here. So we are honored to welcome her here this morning, and uh, I heard the sermon already. It's fantastic. You're going to love it. So let's prepare our hearts for worship with the music of the prelude.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for sins only now, forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores us to the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Genesis, the ninth chapter. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Word of God, word of life.
A reading from 1 Peter, the third chapter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in formal times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels authorities and powers made subject to him. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. <clears throat> In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the <clears throat> Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. I invite any children here to come up. I see 
see Emery. I see Evelyn. Come on up. You got the box. All right. I'm going to save mine for a different day then. That's great. Evelyn, you always got friends with you. Should we put them up here? A uh, little horsey, is that what that is? And a couple of bears hugging each other? Kitties. Oh, kitties. Oh, wow, they got Velcro. Valentine's, wow. That is really, that is really nice. Well, that she had candy, but she, your mom cut the candy off. Did you get to eat the candy? Um, no, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> well, Emery has got this back. Do you did you put something in here? Uh-huh. All right. What could it be, Evelyn? Do you have any idea what this is? Let's see. Ah, uh, what's her name? Alia. Alia. Ah, uh, 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 Alia. <laughs> Aurea. Ah. Ah, we But it's a little baby. All right. And what kind of, does this, like, do you snuggle with your baby? Or do you just take your baby on trips with you? What kind of things do you like to do with your baby? You like to do all that stuff? Yeah, you, you take care of the baby, right? You don't, you, want, you don't want anything to hurt the baby. You want to take care of the baby, right? Because you love the baby. Is that right? And she's getting hugged by a little kitty cat. Well, and I think this morning we heard a story about Jesus being baptized and he comes out of the water and God says, this is my beloved son. And I think about us, when we're baptized, we hear those too and we are reminded that we are God's beloved children. And just like your baby doll, you, can, you take good care of your baby doll and God takes good care of us. And that... And you take good care of your kitties. Yeah. So, and God loves us more than we could ever love even our baby doll. God always loves us more than anyone else could ever love us. Yes. And you think about if God, if you take care of these things, how much more is God going to take care of us when we are so precious to God? I'll let you put that in and we'll have a word of prayer. Got it? Okay. All right, let's put our hands... Yep, they are hugging each other. Let's put our hands together and close our eyes. We'll have a word of prayer. Dear God, God, thank you for loving us and for making us your children. children. Help us to always remember remember how much you love us. us. Amen. Amen. And it looks like Miss Liz is back there for children's word time. Emery, do you want to take the box for next week? You sure can. And I'm just, all right, Evelyn, you can take the box. And Emery, if you can get the cross, and we're all set. The Gospel of Mark packs a lot into those six short verses. Jesus went from his home in Nazareth of Galilee to the Jordan River and was baptized by his cousin John. Where in the Jordan River is anybody's guess? I've made three trips to the Holy Land and every time the baptismal site of Jesus was in a different place. So, somewhere in the Jordan, Jesus was baptized. And when he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens broken open, and a voice came saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. In Mark's version of the story, only Jesus saw this happen. 
and only he heard the voice proclaiming him God's beloved son, we can't even for sure, for sure tell there were other people there. But once Jesus was baptized, immediately the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness where he stayed for 40 days. The wilderness near the Jordan River is desert. Sand and rocks, a few scrubby plants, a few places where water is found. We don't know what Jesus did during those 40 days, but we get the impression that it was a time of wrestling. He was tempted by Satan. There were wild beasts, and yet the angels waited on him. However awed or bewildered Jesus might have been at his baptism, he came out of the desert knowing who he was and clear about the message he was to proclaim. Almost exactly 50 years ago, I took a class called Quest for the Historical Jesus. We read all the old German guys, and including one week a book by Albert Schweitzer named Quest for the Historical Jesus. And our assignment was to read the book and summarize it in one page. There were only five people in this class, so your odds of getting called on to read your paper were pretty good. <laughs> and this day was my day. So I read my paper, and the professor's response was, okay, now give me that in one paragraph. I have no idea what I said at that point, but then he said, okay, give me the message of Jesus in one sentence. And the sentence he was looking for was, Jesus coming out of the wilderness, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That, for the writer of Mark, was the heart and the summary of Jesus' message. And there's an urgency about it. Repent now, for the kingdom is here. It's at hand. Lent is a season of repentance. On Wednesday, we gathered to confess our failings and to ask for forgiveness. Every Sunday, we confess in one form or another that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We lament with St. Paul that the things we want to do, we don't do, and the things we do want to do, we don't. Our sinfulness is a reality, but our sinfulness is not the whole story. At its heart, the meaning of repentance is to turn from something toward something. When Jesus calls us to repent because the kingdom of God is at hand, he's inviting us to turn toward him. He has realized in those desert days that his ministry is to show us what living in the reign of God is like. <clears throat> repent, he says, watch me. And then immediately, Jesus begins to show us what the kingdom of God is like. He began to heal the sick, to comfort the afflicted, to challenge injustice, to give priority to the poor, to include the outcast, and to describe how precious it is to live in the kingdom of God. And people watched, and they turned toward him, and they believed that he was the Son of God, and their lives were changed. Once we catch a glimpse of the reign of God, we would like for our lives to change too. And yet, here we are in bondage to sin and unable to free ourselves. So what do we do? I'm not sure there's any one answer to that, but I do think that in Mark's few verses today, we're invited into a process, a process that follows Jesus' experience. 
When we are baptized in whatever river or pool or font we were baptized in, we also are declared God's children. And when we understand to be God, ourselves to be God's much-loved children, then repentance begin, becomes not something we have to do to be saved. It's become, become something we want to do because we have seen in Jesus what God has in mind for this world, and we want to be a part of it. And then we have to figure out what that means for us. Most of us have to figure that out many times through our lives. And the desert is a good place to do that. A desert can be a barren place and a threatening place, but it is also an open place. In the desert, we can see long distances. We have time and space to look into our own hearts and to ask ourselves and Jesus where, right now, we fit into what God is doing around us. Some of us may feel like we've been driven into the desert like Jesus from the Jordan, but many of us have to go deliberately into the desert. I remember with Thanksgiving, one of my own desert experiences because it was totally an accident. It was the week after Easter. Both of our children were preschool. I was exhausted. And the conference I was supposed to go to the week after Easter got canceled. And this woman that I'm sure was an angel suggested that I see if the Catholic Conference Center in Durham had space that week where I could just go and rest. Well, the sister I talked to said, well, there's nobody here but us sisters, but you're welcome to come. And I went, and I was shown to my room and the dining hall and the library and given a map of the property. And I have no idea what code word I used, but I never saw another human being the entire rest of the week. A bell would ring and my meal would appear on a table. There were no clock clocks on any wall in the whole place. I spent a week in total silence with nature and books and my own thoughts and my journal. And I left with a much better sense, not only rested, but also with a better sense of what my work in the kingdom needed to be. And I came home and I made some changes. That's repentance. Our theme this Lent at Nativity is change. Not change for the sake of change, but change for the sake of the reign of God. And we're invited to ask how it is that we can live more fully as the children of God that we are. You might not have the option of a week with the Sisters of Mercy. But I invite you, if you don't already have it this Lent, to find yourself a desert. You may find that with a day on the mountain with a book and a Bible. You may find your desert on a walking route or in your craft room or your shop. Even a chair in your own home before everybody else wakes up or after they go to bed. Maybe you're the kind of person that needs a partner in the desert. All it takes for some place to be a desert is for it to be a place where you can listen to your own heart and to Jesus. If you spend some time with God in a desert, it's entirely possible that something in your heart or your life will change. The journey of repentance asks something from us, but in the end, it's a journey of joy. The invitation of Lent and of Jesus, repent and live in the kingdom of God even now. Amen.
Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. God of wisdom, bless our work in creating a strategic plan together at Nativity. May you bless us and equip us to serve you faithfully and effectively. Hear us, O God. God, our maker, you remember your covenant with the earth and its inhabitants. Rescue communities and creatures hurting from natural disasters. Preserve species and habitats endangered by human carelessness and disregard. Strengthen our partners in ministry at the Lord's Acre, Lutheridge and Lutherock. Hear us, O God. God, our light, you know our weaknesses. Free all who govern from the temptations of power. Sustain all who work for human rights in every nation. We give you thanks for the Azizi family making a home in the parsonage here. Hear us, O God. God, our help, you care for your beloved children. Comfort all who are grieving, ill, afraid, in pain, or in despair. Feed hungry people living in food deserts. Protect any at risk from exploitation and abuse. Hear us, O God. God, our home, you gather your people. Grant us health and safety as we assemble. Keep us mindful of any who are homebound, hospitalized, convalescing, or traveling, especially Wanda Bond, B.G. Bowers, Sharon Boyd, Wanda Burkhart, Jim Dacey, Billie Jean Flynn, Catherine Griffin, Mandy Horetsky, Mackenzie Jordan, Barbara Knapp, Faye Kong, Peggy Mann, Linda McNeil, Sherry Novak, Nancy Rehan, Karen Rich, Julie Smith, Ruth Tracy, Jim White, Brenta Poole, and those we now name aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O God. <laughs> Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and to receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace with each other.
Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered so that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. which he has betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it for all, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us praise our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Come to the Feast of the Baptized. All are welcome. Please be seated.
body of Christ in you. The 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 body of Christ in you.
I invite you to stand for the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Amen.